Everybody all aboard? All aboard. Yes. You got your clothes packed? Let's hope so. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't sound too confident about that. I do. Oh. I have Does everybody else have their clothes packed? As long, as long as you have underwear, well that's a good thing. Yeah. And as long as you got my bag that I packed, then I'm packed. I guess if you only had one pair of clothes, you at least would have some clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got snacks packed too? All righty, so I think we're ready to go, right? Yeah. Ready to go. On the board. Oh, I forgot something. Oh, man. It's going to fit. Gotta get it in here. Ah. Alright, I think that'll work. I think it will work. Close. Alright, now I think we're ready. Alright. Let's pray, then we'll leave. Today we are heading back to the city I was born in. Sometime after kindergarten, when I was younger than Micah here, my parents moved my family and I to Charlotte, North Carolina. And that's where I spent the rest of my years growing up. In fact, most of my childhood memories are from there. But as a youth, my family would travel through these mountains back to our hometown. And then life happens, and we stop going back. Years go by, things change, people change. Hey, even the roads have changed. And with better roads, it is about 45 minutes to an hour faster getting there. And on the way there, we got a call from our daughter who was spending some time with her friends. Hey. So we drove a little bit more and finally arrived in my birth town, Johnson City, where we rendezvoused with Salem. <laughs> we and it was so good to see her again. We really missed her back on the farmstead. Good. She had a number of days Much away with her friends and she had a great time. <laughs> Alrighty. 
Can we all squeeze in? Put the cage in here. You gotta climb over the cage. <laughs> See you guys. All right, climb on in. We got a cage in here. You can hop in the cage. <laughs> While in Johnson City, we went to the mall that was still there from when I was a kid. I remember this store when I was a little kid. And we even drove around seeing a number of places and it was shocking to see how much things have changed. But after reminiscing, our full family drove just a little bit more to go see our friends who live nearby. And we arrived at their house just before dinner time. How's it going? <laughs> All right. And with that, I introduce you to our friends, the Ng family. They have a YouTube channel called Sprinkle with Soil. Thank you. It's a real gift or a dad gift, but I'm so excited. Yeah, <laughs> 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 sourdough bread there, yummy. Yeah, okay. Oh. Ladle is hot, so. Ladle's hot. Ooh, yummy. Smells good, doesn't it? You get some. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ladies first. What? <laughs> <laughs> Sophie and Tim, it's so good to see you guys again. Yeah. I, on our way here, I couldn't help but think back to when we first met. You guys remember when we first met? It was at the God's Good Table event. Yeah, that's right. Polyface. That's Polyface. right. It's, that's been a couple years ago now, now, right? Yeah. It's been a while. Two years, yeah. I think, since Man. Polyface. And we've seen each other a few times at various events since then. But really appreciate you guys opening up your home and, and cooking us some enjoyable food. It's been great. <laughs> it's mm. looking good there. <laughs> Lacey's enjoying it back there. I am. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. She's a good cook. She has a cookbook. Do you have one on her? One on you? I do, yeah. We have, um, actually, I was cooking right out of it oh, really? <laughs> for the meatballs. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a nourishing Asian kitchen. And Sayla has actually been using, she's got a copy of this, and you signed it for her, thank you very much. And she's actually been using it. What all have you been making out of there lately? Kimchi so far. Kimchi? Well, the kimchi is really good. It had some nice spice and kick to it. We actually have a lot of plans for when we're here. We're going to be doing a podcast, actually two podcasts. We're going to be on their podcast, but also my very first podcast. We're planning to be on there too, and recording a number of other things. And also that kennel that... I squeezed into the van. Well, we're going to be getting an animal from them to go back home with us. After dinner, we brought all of our junk, I mean close, to the Ings RV where we would be sleeping the next few days that we were here. And surprisingly, this RV easily sleeps all six of my family. And after a good night's sleep, the next morning, I headed out with Tim while he did chores. Need me to grab one? Where do you get your hay from? My neighbor, we uh, barter, we give him dairy. Okay. So he's invested interest in making sure that it's no spray hay. There you go. <laughs> That's a good partnership right there. Yeah. All right, I, I could bring it in, but it's kind of hard with the whole animal management and make sure they don't come out. Uh, you can hear them, they're hungry. They're cute. They're only a few days old. Wow, those are cute, man. <laughs> hey. Yeah.
So we have to supplement um, right now once the grass is down. We use uh, alfalfa pellets and this organic uh, natural or non-GMO feed basically. And I have to add this minerals too, so it don't get too close, it gets a little dusty. To make sure the cattle and the sheep get whatever minerals. And, and they're really smart. They know if they need it or not, if their body needs it. So if they don't need it, they won't eat it. We'll do a couple of these. Okay. It's okay for me to come in with you? Yeah, no, please. Okay. Yeah. You, you're okay with it. Uh, yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't want your dogs tearing me up or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go get some more. They're gonna fight over it. And our neighbor John, and mentor, he helped to get us a longer trough so they wouldn't be fighting too much. There we go. Right? Especially with uh, the female. She's got the horns. You see, she bullies her way. Oh, wow. I'm what breed are these? Ca um, these are uh, Her Herefords. The ones with the black and white spotted. Okay. And she's actually a Jersey mix right there. See, she's buttoned with the, oh, yeah. the sheep there. So you may be wondering why I'm adding more feed here because you just saw I chucked over two bales of hay. But what I'm learning from John is that, you know, these guys are going to, we're going to be processing them this year. And you want to make sure that the cattle don't lose any weight because if they lose weight, they're not going to make it up. It doesn't matter how much more feed you give them. So it's really, really uh, challenging, especially during the winter, and we had a really hard winter. So we had to make sure you have to keep that in mind in terms of, you know, the amount of money that you have to have for feed. And also, that's why we do uh, regenerative farming with rotational grazing. Oh, and, and check out our, our bull calf. He's only about two or three days old, too. Oh, wow. But it's really exciting during this time of year, you know, uh, you know, seeing new life spring up on the farm. That's fantastic. It is beautiful. <laughs> hey. Yeah, it's Luke. That's the daddy. Like He's that. a lover. He's good. <laughs> That's great. Hey. Oh, oh, I got some friends here. I got some friends. I got some friends here. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Hey there. Hey there. Hey. So the dogs are pretty good with people for the most part, but we'll let you know when somebody's here absolutely so the, our dogs are cool with you because i'm with you and we got these lgds or livestock guardian dogs and they are a blend of great pyrenees with anatolian shepherd and akbash and we love them because they're family dogs because we want them safe for our young children to be around but also protective dogs too on the farm protecting the livestock as well as you know our homestead and that's that's very important to keep that in mind it's exactly what I have in mind, so that would be perfect. Breakfast and supplement with some like, non GMO kibble. Put the big guns. Try one. I want to enter. So you give them the food scraps to keep the other animals from eating dog food. They yeah, they'll keep the they'll keep the other animals from eating it. Okay, they they, they do a good mama job themselves. Daddy, you can hear them. Well, mama doesn't want anyone else eating. Uh. So the dogs stay with the other livestock 24-7? Yep, they stay here with the livestock 24-7. And what I didn't realize is that they are nocturnal. So they're up and we're sleeping, which is great because that's when all the bad actors come out yeah. at night. Right? <laughs> and there's, we got two of them, so one can rest while the other is on. And it really depends on how much acreage you have. We're on five acres, so two is a little bit of overkill. Um, we should probably have 10 acres to have two, okay. two um, uh, full-size livestock guardian dogs. 
but getting in the home setting and we got these dogs in California and we went and visited the farms, which is super important to go and visit the farms and see the mom and dad at work and that the dogs are not coddled, that they're actually sleeping out there with the animals and that they're working dogs. That's really important. But um, they, they've been great. They, these full-size dogs, um, they're a little undersized compared to what, you know, a, a full full-on Great Pyrenees is, but we got two of them because we are told that two can take on a black bear, two can take on a cougar or a mountain lion. And so that's what we wanted to have, to be able to do that. And I often get this question is like, which one's more fierce? Like which, which dog should I get first? The male or the female? I mean, honestly, you can't go wrong with either one. Um, but I would say from my experience, I think the female is the one that's actually going to do the kill and do the dirty work, kind of like the, the lioness in the, in the pack there. <laughs> um, and the males have the deeper bark, but they usually stay at the home base, kind of, probably like how the lions are. <laughs> that, that may sound bizarre to some people that they live out here with the livestock and a lot of people have their animals, their dogs right inside and not used to seeing livestock guardian dogs or working farm dogs. It, it is really interesting because up until this point, we had little dogs. I had a, we had a Yorkie. We had the, we had a lab <laughs> and they were indoor dogs and we were doing clicker training at PetSmart oh. and stuff. <laughs> but you know, when they're little guys like this guy, I mean, he's so adorable. He's cute. You want to bring him in, but you don't, you have to fight the urge to coddle them or even by a dog bed, you know, just put some hay out and let them, um, endure the elements. I mean, we had like a really cold winter this year and this little guy and, um, the one that went to Dr. Mercola, like they were sleeping out here in the snow. I mean, we have, you know, a little shed that all the animals, um, stay in, but it's really, really important. It's kind of like with babies, you know, the, the, the formative years, same with puppies, like you want them to be, to associate themselves as working dogs right from the get go and be used to working with um, whatever livestock you've got. I mean, we happen to just have beef, cattle and sheep, but um, it's, it's super important to do that. Hmm. <laughs> I continue to hang out with Tim while he finished the farm chores. And Tim was right. As soon as he left me alone with the animals, the dogs started barking at me. After the chores, it was time to work on the podcast. This is just a little bit of behind the scenes of how things go when you're self-production. <laughs> and multi-purpose using your house to set up for a podcast <laughs> you just got to do what you got to do it and that it means even converting your dining room table into the area where we're going to record a podcast so how does it feel being the host camera guy the director production crew all in one <laughs> It, you know, it's an honor to have to have you here, Mike. It's also a little nerve-wracking just having all this stuff, but it's going to be good. There we go. Yeah, we're building in redundancy. There we go. <laughs> hey, I share I share your pain. I know how it is setting all this stuff up. Yeah, we just we don't have production crews. We we're doing what we got to do ourselves. That's absolutely right. That's what that's what's at the heart of homesteading and all the things that we do. We just do, do it ourselves or whatever you want to call it. Exactly. We got to make these what we got. That's right. <laughs> So what your kiddos working on over here? Um, you want some coloring? Ooh, is that some rotational grazing? Yeah. Ooh, so how does it work? So, I think they just move the chickens where like, so the in their chicken coop, yeah. everywhere. So they follow yeah. after the bigger animals? Yes. The big animals come through first, and the medium size, and then the chickens? Mm -hmm. There we go. And what is that that the chickens are going to have to scratch right there? You got some little fumes coming up there. What is that? Poop. <laughs> That's some poop right there. <laughs> so what are they going to do with the poop? What scratch is... it. Scratch and it. eat it. No, they're not going to eat the poop. No, they're going to eat. No, they're not going to do that. <laughs> so what the chickens are going to do is they're going to eat the fly larvae and things that are in the poop and spread out the manure, the poop, so that way it helps build the soil, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> this is 
Wow. You want this in the shot? I've never done one like this. You're official. Yeah. You want this in the shot? Professional. You're official now. That's what it's like working with professionals, right? I guess. (laughs) And after Tim got everything set up, we started recording the podcast. And you can check out the podcast that Lacey and I recorded with Tim and Sophie on their Call to Farms podcast. And also stay tuned for updates on my upcoming podcast that we recorded with Tim and Sophie as well. But after recording, we ate. Actually, we did a lot of eating while we were with the Ings. Sophie is a fantastic cook. During our time here, we did a lot of things together. In addition to eating, we also visited a local farm that the Ings are helping to support. We visit another farm that the Ings help with milking their cow. And Tim is actually a homestead realtor. He helps aspiring homestead families find the ideal property for them. And while we were there, we visited one of those properties. And actually, Tim and I did a soil test on the property. And we even went to church together. And did I say we ate? Yeah, we ate, and one of the meals that we ate was directly from Sophie's cookbook. And Sayla helped out with preparing the meal. All right. So let's put the onions on the plate. Thank you. Yep. You can flip it over. Keep so all this. So we're gonna plate this. So this is officially how you do the process of making pho. Is that how it goes? Yes, this is it. All right. Mm-hmm. So we're in the plating process now. Okay. So you started with the noodles there? Noodles, yep. Okay. These are just rice noodles. And then we got some chicken in there. Okay. And we have some chopped scallion and cilantro. My mom always said you can't have pho without scallions and cilantro. So that's how we actually started gardening. (laughs) Figured out how to succession plant that for her. All right, and then once this is plated with some onions, we're gonna go ahead and grab some broth. All right, Sailor, you're taking notes, right? So we can do this at home. All right, ready? This is boiling hot. So this is 100% authentic here, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. Made just the way my mom taught me. Wow. With having the book, that just gives you an opportunity to be able to pass something down to your future generations. Yes. That's so cool. (laughs) And each night that we spent with the Ings, we stayed up late, fellowshipping and enjoying time together. But the last night that we were there, we were up pretty late, enjoying our last remaining time together. In fact, the next morning, it was hard for some people to get up. All right, so the rest of the family's still sleeping in the RV, but it's time for us to start heading back home. In addition to all the fun stuff that we had planned to do with the Ings, well, the main reason why we came was I'm gonna be taking back one of their dogs. Uh, They had a number of puppies that went to various other farms as guardian livestock dogs. And I'm gonna be taking back their last one. We have mostly shepherds on our farm, but I really would like to have a guardian livestock dog. And I'm a little nervous because I don't know how the girls are going to take seeing their last dog go. Hopefully they're gonna take it well. All right, gotta do something a little bit different with this kennel going back home than when we came. I'm gonna try something completely different than this. Take this out of here. Right. Stop for now. Let's see here. So, let's put 
put this down, put the seat down, rearrange some of the luggage and clothes and things. And move this. So our new addition. Got some stuff to move, buddy. Our boots. Been using them while we're here. For sure. Let's bring. Alright, let's go here. This is gonna be tight. Oh man. Oh man. This is not gonna work. Alright. Let's see, it won't go this way either, probably. Turn it this way. Ugh, get off of there. Yep, and it'll be sticking out and hitting the glass. Then I guess the only way to fit it in here, and so that way we all six fit in here too, because we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Cannot reduce the seats at all, because then we won't have one of us that'll fit. It definitely can't leave one of us behind. All right, so uh, I think what I'm about to do is put it back where it was, but maybe leave the seat down so everybody kind of has a walkway, including an area for our new addition to come back home with us and can easily get it in and out. I did somewhat consider that too, but this is the biggest cage that I have from back home. Uh, we'll just have to give it a shot too. And we're dropping the seat down. I'm still gonna be able to fit my luggage in there. <laughs> Cause we were pretty tight before. So Tim, what yeah. got you guys into raising guardian livestock dogs? Well, we were newbies in California and we were asking a lot of our neighbors because we basically fell on a bunch of chickens because we knew when we purchased this property, it had t at least 20 egg laying hens. And then we acquired some sheep and goats and we knew that we wanted some sort of protection. And besides building a fence, we also looked into getting some guardian geese but the geese weren't really doing their jobs. They were really messy, they were really loud. Uh -huh. And I think because why we got, we got six guardian geese and then they started just hanging out with one another. Uh, yeah, that can happen. They were, they were like a click. <laughs> but then they started getting picked off one by one. Oh man. It was like a horror film and I didn't know what was going on. Oh man. And so we started you know, seeking advice from neighbors and just you know, started looking into it, researching. And they said, we need to get some livestock guardian dogs. And that's, that's what prompted us to look into the Great Pyrenees dogs. So what turned out to be, we got livestock guardian dogs that were Pyrenees, Anatolian Shepherd, and Akbash mix. Okay. And they came from two different farms. And it's really important. We went and actually visited and toured those farms because we wanted to see their mom and dads at work. Yeah, that's, that's important. You want to make sure that the dogs were not coddled at all, yeah. which was totally new to us because prior to that, <laughs> we had, you know, a Yorkie, we've had Labs, and we were, you know, one of those families that, you know, took them to PetSmart, uh, did the clicker training. So those were your little yep. kids, <laughs> your little that's babies. Right. <laughs> These are outdoor working dogs, and even though they're really cute as pups, and you want to bring them in, you have to fight the urge, okay. and just have them have them live out there with the livestock. You want them bonded with the livestock. All right. Yep. Oh man, my boots are torn. It's good working. <laughs> Used farm boots right there. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? There's another lamb. Oh, you got a new lamb here. Oh wow. We got a new lamb. We got another lamb. How cool is that? Wow. Oh my goodness. Yay. That's raindrop. Rain.
raindrop, snowflake. Uh, oh yeah, I see. Uh, there's, a, there's another one back in there. There is. Oh. Yes. Wow. Yay! <laughs> that is exciting. Cool. It yeah. has been raining a lot. Look and at that. And since we're past the mud, we can go up to the floor. Of course, we gotta see the land. Are you letting me take a lamb home? He's <laughs> like, no. <laughs> wow. These two are the older ones, and those two are the ones. Oh, wow. They're so cute. <laughs> Look at them. Do they do what they need to do in there. They know what to do. Yeah, they're just born. Wow. Looks like you guys have gotten a lot of rain here <laughs> recently. I do. We do. I'm going to get myself some muck boots too, like you. <laughs> they come in handy. Yep. They definitely do. <laughs> so the puppies <laughs> ran into the garden. <laughs> <laughs> He's hibernating. Come on, get up. Come on. He's like 50 pounds. Come here. Uh. <laughs> He's the heaviest dog. These livestock guardian dogs are not like a normal house dog. But he's chubby. Oops, I want to stand on the mound. <laughs> okay, come on. Wait. He's a chubby boy. <laughs> it's going to be a little difficult when you take him out to go pee because, uh, it's tough uh, to just leash him. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> hey. There you go. Hey. Hey. Huh? Hey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep, it's going to take, take a little bit of time, but you'll, work you'll on. Quick, quickly bond with your family. Here we go. Work on building that bond and relationship. Uh huh. Yeah. You gonna miss him? Yeah. <laughs> so chubby. Yeah. He's gonna need to go to work now. Yeah. Nice and healthy. Had the longest time with Mama. Mm -hmm. Definitely very well nourished. Is it sad each time one of them leaves? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It looks like the dad. Looks like me. What are you gonna miss most? He's he's chubbiness. And he's chubbiness. <laughs> are you gonna still help Dada with the chores, even though the puppy's gonna be gone? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think that was the only reason why you're doing the chores outside. <laughs> so how is it for you guys each time one of the puppies is going to a new home? It's tough, but we do have the satisfaction knowing that our dogs are gonna go home and be protecting other homesteads. Yeah. yeah. So that gives you that 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 sounds good. Definitely yeah. feels good. Yeah. So how many puppies did they have? Uh, this litter was seven. Seven. Wow, mm -hmm. that's cool. So he's number seven. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. cool. I like the number seven too. So that's, that's pretty a good neat. number. It's a really good number. <laughs> it's you number know. seven. Look at his paws. They're huge too. <laughs> Man, it's gonna be a big dog. Yeah. Sure the paws. Look at those paws. And they have dual mm. paws too. Oh They're wow. So cute. Mm. Handsome guy. <laughs> Y'all have any suggestions for names yet that we shouldn't think about? Mm. I don't know. No. We've come up with a lot of temporary names. Yeah. But. Do you do that with each puppy? Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. How many people have kept the names that you guys had as temporary names? <laughs> no, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. Taking him to his new home. <laughs> Is he handsome or cute or what? Handsome. <laughs> cute. Go get a couple of help. Hey. 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 Poor guy's kind of confused. He's like, what is going on here? Oh. <laughs> Don't be too sad to see him go. <laughs> Told your dad, you got to come visit us and then you can see us and him. <laughs> oh, you got some towels for him? Thank you. 
is going to be nice and comfy because of you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Move it anyways, but there you go. Let's make it as comfortable as possible. Good. There we go. All right. <laughs> Squeeze one out of there, Tim. I oh, know. <laughs> Thank you for doing that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Farm gear. Got it all in there. Well, well let's get hugs and say bye. <laughs> well, bye, Josiah. <laughs> bye. Give you a hug. Bye, Lacey. No, we're going to meet you guys. Yeah. Hey, you got a hug, <laughs> All righty. So you thinking of any names for him yet? Maybe Boomer. Yeah. Like well. Boomer. <laughs> I think Boomer is no. <laughs> Boomer no. Boomer is a no. <laughs> what do you got, Josiah? Anything? Thank you. No, mommy. Since you said no, what do you got? No, everybody was saying Boomer. No. <laughs> I don't have it. I gotta think about it for a little bit. <laughs> well, I guess that's the challenge we have ahead of us. It's figuring out a name. Apollo. No, not Apollo. Rocky. Thor. Thor. Hermes. Hermes. Hercules. Hercules. Hezekiah, what do you think? What do you think a puppy's name should be? don't quite have an opinion yet. Julius Caesar. Julius Caesar? No. 132 best Marvel hey. dog names for your little Avenger. Guys, yeah, let us know in the comment section below if you like any of the names that we've mentioned or you have some of your own ideas of what we should name the dog. Everybody ready to get out or are you gonna stay in here? <laughs> You're all packed in? You all right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're asleep? Mm-hmm. Think the dog get any sleep too? Mm-mm. No. <laughs> Almost there. All right. Should be able to get out now. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> You ready to get out? Huh? Hey there. You ready to see your new home? Huh? Mm. Alright. I'm on out. Alright, so we can get in here like that. Water. Oh, the baby woke up. Come on, drink your water. Drink your water. Oh, at least it's standing up now. Just shaking away. Give him a very fat rim deeper. Fear. Yeah, we can give him some Ignatia that'll help settle him down and not be so scared. Maybe some aconite. We'll see. Alrighty. So we basically have just turned his world upside down. He's like, I am on another world here. Oh. 
There's a little bit of this one. We'll do this. Ideally, you don't want to put them on your hand, but we're kind of not an ideal situation. Here, buddy. Put them up in that little cheek right there. Yes, sir. What an adventure. Well, make sure you stay tuned to see how our new dog adjusts to a new life here on our farmstead. And also, stay tuned to see what name we're going to pick out for him. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do.